very moment. Thank you for the breath of life. Thank you for his protection. Thank you for safety. Thank you for his provision. Thank you for all that God is to you. Just express your love. Express your gratitude to him. He's a God all by himself. There is no one like him. Wherever you are tonight, you are in your living room, in your bedroom, on the road, in the bus, wherever you are, just celebrate God. Magnify his holy name. Thank him for all, all that he is to you. Give him all the glory. Magnify his name. Thank you for this year 2024. Thank you, Lord, for how God has started with us. We are in the fourth month already, and God has, has been doing wonders, and he will keep doing wonders. So magnify his name. Thank him. Thank him. Give him all the glory. Mighty God, we bless you. Mighty God, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for your manakata. Can we thank you for everyone in, in this meeting tonight? I said, Lord, thank you for bringing me, for bringing my brother, for bringing my sister, for making the part of this service tonight. Oh, Lord, I appreciate you. Your word says unto you, shall the garden of your people we are coming to your presence. Father, thank you because tonight, oh God, will be a night of encounter in the name of Jesus. The Bible proclaimed that said, surely there is an end. Said the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. I don't know what you are expecting God to do tonight. The, 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 the evening has been tagged how to produce, how to out, out, out the faith that produce results. So can we say, Lord, in the name of as I activate, oh God, the faith, the things you have developed in me, that seed of faith, that seed of, of, of greatness that I activated tonight. Let your word come to full manifestation in the name of Jesus. Loma Santaya. If you want to do that activation, can we begin to turn into the spirit? In the language of the spirit, right now, the map. If you can have the language of, of the spirit, can we begin to express your, your expectation in, in the name of Jesus? Manakuza Patayale. Lerike Sempa Takataya Lema Zontoya. Leriko Zompo to Yelika Tamaya Banka Tazalaya. Leriko Zonto Yele Manaku Zonte Halaba. Lara Kasapala Kotaya. Father, we give you all the glory tonight. Thank you, Lord, for what you said to do. Thank you, Lord, for your word, oh God, that will come like sword, like come like fire. Thank you, because there shall be accompanying signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, because all that we do tonight, we commit them into your hands. Holy Spirit, take charge in the name of Jesus and let your name and your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' most precious name, we are giving thanks. Amen. If you are excited to be in God's presence, can we shout a big hallelujah? Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Can we put our hands together as a welcome TVG? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, welcome your neighbor to service tonight. Welcome your neighbor to service tonight. Let's get into the atmosphere of worship. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We worship you. We bless you for today. A million tongues will never be enough To tell all you have done Everything within my very soul I say thank you, Jesus A million tongues A million tongues will never be enough To tell To tell all
praise this evening. I will put aside the stress of the day and give God the glory of praise. Come on, put those hands together.
It doesn't matter what comes my way The greater one lives inside of me What's his name? His name is Jesus Wherever you are connecting in from, you are on site or online at any of our centers, come on, just lift up your voices in worship and bless the name of the Lord, the one who has made you more than a conqueror. Glory to God. Come on, bless the name of Jesus, the one who has caused you to be complete in Christ. Scripture says we are complete in Him, who is the head of every principality and power. Come on, bless the name of Jesus for all that he has made you to be in God, in God. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord, for our position in Christ. Blessing us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places to the glory of your name. Scripture talks about the greatness of his power towards us who believe. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord, because you know that we have been consistently preserved by the power of God through faith. We bless your name. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise in this place. Bless the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. All right, in the next couple of minutes we'll be praying. We'll be lifting up our voices in thanksgiving and in supplication to the Lord. And we'll just begin first by the first, very first prayer point on our prayer kit. Media, please, you could just help us with that very quickly. Amen. You can make reference to it if you have it on your gadget or whatever it is. And we're going to just lift up our voices in thanksgiving. Let's do this together. Now, the, 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 the prayer point says, Father, come on, say it with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are exceedingly grateful. No, I can't hear you now. Say, we are exceedingly grateful. Oh, you're not sounding thankful. I say, we are exceedingly grateful for your goodness and faithfulness to us. We acknowledge you as our covenant keeper. 
and we thank you that your covenant is at work in our lives in the name of Jesus come on lift up your voices and just begin to bless the name of the Lord as it is scribbled down in the prayer point thanking him and being grateful for his goodness for his faithfulness for his kindness for his help sir, for his protection for his provision sir. God is a good God in him there is no shadow of turning father we are grateful we are thankful you have become a covenant keeper we acknowledge you as such you are a covenant keeping God you are a covenant keeping God you are a covenant keeping God and we thank you that your covenant is at work in our lives at work in our finances is at work in our families is at work in our destinies is at work in our ministries glory to Jesus Makasa Frotija and Shante Praitaribosa Scripture says the Lord is good to all and his tender messes are over all his works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your sin shall bless your name. Father, we bless your name. We come as a church, as individuals, as family members, to lift up our voices and praises to you, thanking you, acknowledging you as our covenant keeper. Manka Prasupra Ida Ashanta Abrakaya. Aya, are you blessing the name of Jesus in this place? Come on, thank him. Give him praise. He's the reason you are still standing. He's the reason why you are still here. Bible says it's by his mercies. We are not consumed. That is a function of his covenant. Mangra di Vokopa. Asapra Ida Boska. And he says, they shall be my people and I will be their God. They shall be my people and I will be their God. Lord, this is the effect of the covenant. Lord, we see it all over our lives. And we are grateful. We are thankful. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' name we have thanked him. And the church said an amen. Come on, and the people said they resound in amen. Oh, come on, I can't hear you now. Is it that my mic is louder than yours? And the church said they resound in believing amen. Hallelujah. All right, very quickly, we get into the second prayer point. Still on our prayer kids, the second prayer point. And it says this, let's do this together again. And it says, Father, we thank you. I can't hear you now. Come on, say, Father, we thank you for your covenant of kindness. Glory to God. And mercy. We stand on that covenant and come against any form of cruelty or disfavor. Over, I can't hear you now. Let's take that again. We stand on that covenant and come against any form of cruelty or disfavor over any member of GIC and our loved ones. We walk daily in your favor and kindness in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Begin to declare it and make it a prayer over your life as we thank God for his covenant of kindness, his covenant of mercies, his covenant of favor. In the name of Jesus, we stand on that covenant. We stand on the integrity of that covenant and come against any form of cruelty, any form of disfavor, any form of disappointment over our people, over God's people. In the name of Jesus, scripture says, Thou, O oh Lord, we bless the righteous, and with favor you will encompass him as with a shield. And we declare in the name of Jesus over God's people tonight that, Lord, your favor is a defense. Your favor is our defense. Your favor is our defense. We call upon the favor of God. We speak favor in our lives, in our families, upon our finances, in our, in our workplaces, in our business place. In the name of Jesus, we declare no more disappointments, no more disfavors, no more unkindness. In the name of Jesus, by the favor of God, the doors we knock shall open unto us. The doors we knock shall respond to us. By your favor, Lord, we are brought before kings. We are brought before nobles. We are brought before men that matter. By your favor, that devil is a liar. We carry upon ourselves the oak, the, the cloth of favor, the ornament of favor, the perfume of favor by the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Come on, if you know you are the favor of the Lord, shout an amen. Come on, it's okay. I know before now some doors have been closed unto you, but by the favor of God, they are opened. 
Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I said by the favor of God, those doors will respond to you positively. In the name of Jesus. All right, the last prayer point and we'll be done. The Bible, the, the prayer point is saying, prayer point number five, quickly. Let's get our kit and we'll be done in the next couple of seconds. It says, Father, prayer point number five. Media, please help us quickly. Number five, number five. Okay, let's do this together. It says, Father, as we continue in our season of radical praise and increase, cause each life and home to fully radiate your presence and blessings in the name of Jesus. Let's say it again. Say, say Father, as we continue in our season of radical praise and increase, cause each life and home to fully radiate your presence and blessings in the name of Jesus. Come and lift up your voice and begin to pray. That as we praise, as we praise, as we continue in this season of radical praise in the name of Jesus, every life, every home is radiating the presence of God, is radiating the blessings of God, is radiating the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the people praise you, O God, and let all the earth praise you. And the Bible says, and the earth shall bring forth its increase. We declare that as we praise, our lives radiate your glory in the mighty name of Jesus scripture says I will make them and the places all around, down, all around my hill a blessing I will cause showers to come down in their season and there shall be showers of blessing in the mighty name of Jesus father we thank you we give you praise for that which you are already doing as we praise you thank you Lord we are thankful for your hand upon our lives blessed be your holy name for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed and the church said an amen come on shout an amen like you have prayed hallelujah i'd like us to put our hands together quickly as we welcome tpg to take us forward in this service and please you may be seated thank you i am your own i am your own till the day you Jesus, I am your own. I am your own. Jesus, I am your own. Till the day you will Jesus, I am daily as I leave. Often as I breathe. Let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Father, daily as I leave, and as often as I take my breath, let my whole life be expressions of your grace. And so I cry, I'm a father. Hallowed Yeah, you can sing along if you know the song. Yeah, let the Lord hear you. Hallowed be. So daily I sally. Yes. As often as I let your whole life be expressions of your Sing daily as I leave, oh God, and as often as I let my whole life be expressions of your grace. As we lift our voices to the Lord, we cry, I'm a Father, hallowed be your name, yes, hallowed.
God honor and praise wherever you are. Give God honor and praise if you can pray in the Holy Spirit and define yourself some more. Thank you, Father, for tonight. Thank you, Father, you are the glory and the lift of our head. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We give you honor. We give you, we honor you, Jesus. If you are online in any of our midweek centers, ensure you are defining yourself or you are worshiping, whatever you are doing, let the Spirit be stirred within you. Let the Holy Ghost be stirred within you. If you're in Surulere or any of the centers or you are the good land, wherever you are, joining physically or virtually, just tear yourself up. The Lord is our strength. It's been a very busy day, I, I know, but let's allow the Holy Spirit have his way. Let's subdue the flesh. Mando rosa lambra de caraba de cosonta la bada cadega. Have a de cosondo brade que senda lambra de satela. Valambra de testonda labra de tocro protecase. Have a la de que prada casenda la da bradeta. We break the power of the prince of the air. Holy Spirit, this atmosphere is yours. Holy Spirit, this atmosphere is yours. Let there be understanding, under light, answers, answers, answers. Asandala kapata kasata. We have answers. We have direction. Galabadaya. Oh, sangalabaya. Ambrade saka. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, last week I had. A kind of teaching, teaching on how to make your faith produce results. And we talked about the principal ingredient for faith, which is the word of God. And we drove it a bit into meditations, uh, how to concentrate without allowing your devices, especially the smartphone, uh, to distract you, you know. And then we talked about um, uh, understanding. And we, we talked about Philip, you know, to Gaza, you know, our Ethiopian Enoch to understand the word as an Acts of the Apostle, chapter 8, and then we prayed and then we had a great time. Okay, so we're going to have another dimension at uh, this particular uh, service, uh, and I want you to concentrate. One thing I noticed about Jesus, he spent three years with his disciples, and he had more teachings than laying, on hand, laying of hands on them. A laying of hands is great. In fact, it's more productive when you have been taught, right? So it's not, it wasn't just calling them every day to pray, pray. You know, it was teaching them. When he does for the masses, he comes to expound it to them. And by three years, they were already Jesuses, all of them, even much more. Uh, I believe teaching is the new face in, in that sense as God is strengthening local assemblies and building his people so that you can have some personal... Uh, power, so to say, to carry out God's, uh, I mean, to be able to use the power that God has given you already to fulfill his mandate over our lives. And we're so glad tonight we have a friend of the house uh, to teach. To, the Holy Ghost will be teaching us through him. Uh, if you want to put your hands together, you want to do that. Um, it, it's, no, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a new face to us anyway. And they will also be with us on Sunday morning. Uh, so we're going to be a good mix. Um, so I don't want to waste time. It's, a, it's like a teaching night. Like last week, was the, we had public holiday. So many of us were very, very energetic and everything. I know many of us came from work. And in case you are still in the Uber ride, or you are still on your way home, or your way to the church, you can tune in and just begin to receive. I believe there will be answers to questions in our hearts. I believe many things that people struggle to know how to handle will come clear by the ministration of the Holy Spirit. So I don't want to waste time this evening without much ado. As we say, let's welcome 
Pastor Larry Rex on No Sawyer as a bless us. Sound guys, let's try and clarify the sound very well. Welcome, Pastor Rex. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please be seated. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> It's, it's always a huge privilege for me to, to be here. I appreciate Pastor Yemi's love and faith and, and everything for over 20 decades. No, did I say 20 decades? No, two decades, all right? Maybe someday to be 20. <laughs> 20, 20 years, right? Two decades. You know, it's, it's, it's been wonderful. I met Pastor Yemi year 2000, so it'll be 24 years this year. So where, where were you people back then? All right, so I met him before almost everybody, right? <laughs> and it's been, it's been amazing. He's been there for us, all right? Not just ministry-wise, personally helping us and watching us grow. Please help me celebrate Pastor Yemi and also Pastor Bimbo. They've been a huge blessing. I know you love them. We love them too, all right? So thank you. Good to see everybody here tonight. And those of us joining live stream and all the church centers, it's it's a privilege to be here speaking and knowing that every one of us were connecting where we are. But like Pastor just asked us to do some minutes ago, could we pray in the spirit like two more minutes? Just pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues. If you can hear yourself, just hear yourself. Raise your volume a little bit. Hear yourself. All right. Sometimes that helps you because our minds can just be, you know, just flying about the place. Your body might, you know, coming from work, going home, going, coming to church, being here. Just raise your own volume. Hear your own self. Raise your volume. Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 14 and verse 2, that he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men but to God. It means when we talk in tongues, we're not speaking to the air. We're speaking to our Father. So talk in tongues like you're talking to him. Because you are talking to him. Talk in tongues as though he were listening. Because he is listening. Talk to your father. Talk to your father. Talk to your father. Talk to your father. What a beautiful privilege we have. To have that personal line of communication with him. That surpasses our mere understanding. That surpasses our language. But can reach deep into the thoughts of our hearts. And then we speak to him. And as we do that, the Bible says that we're strengthened. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself also. We build ourselves up. So just get charged right now. Just charge a little bit. All right, let's just add like two more minutes to that. Just charge some more. Charge some more. Charge. Just charge yourself. Charge yourself. Charge yourself. Charge yourself. Just charge yourself. Karabatara baya. Menta hasa fradoso menanda. Men are non prodogodos or those of you connecting online. Let's do this together. Let's do this together. Let's do this. You might be in the comfort of your home, but right now you're with us. Let's do this together. Kera basanta yasa manto rabakasata manenda prado kadasa prada kadasa men on andoro godu so free keroso men on tolo godoso men on tolo godese mitiasa hasi ata hata. Matora pasata lagada menonon dologodo so fredusa yes father yes father oh we give you praise we give you praise we give you praise hallelujah 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 thank you father in the name of Jesus father we thank you we give you praise thank you for your love thank you for your grace thank you for your spirit Thank you because we're edified tonight. We are strengthened tonight. We receive understanding tonight, Father. And thank you because we make great progress. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Um, we could try to find a title. <laughs> but I, I, I'll come at it tonight like as though it were a charge. And that's as simple as this. Please use your faith. All right? That, that's it. Use your faith. Use your faith. We, we may go through all the technicalities of faith because they're important and lay the foundation for them. But haven't learned faith. 
haven't understood faith, we're still going to come back to this bus stop. Use it. You have to use it. Because the issue in the body of Christ is using. And by the word use, I know you might have a negative understanding of, you know, when you use something, maybe you don't like it. No, you use the thing you like. That shoe you're comfortable with, you wear it a lot. All right? That hoodie you like, you wear it more. That belt you like, you wear it more. That chair in your home you feel more comfortable with or most comfortable with is the one you use the most or more than the others, right? So you use things. So the word use might not necessarily be negative, all right? So take your mind away from the negative concept. Faith has to be used. Now, Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews 5, very, very instructive in Hebrews 5 from the 12th verse. Hebrews chapter 5 and then verse 12. It's also interesting how it says here, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. You have need of milk and not solid food. So it's saying they should have been teachers by now. But they are not. They should have grown. Can we maybe do NLT? Right? You should have grown. You should have left this class. You should have left this stage. All right? And then you see what he's saying. He said, you've been believers for so long. <laughs> Did you see that? You've been believers for so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You are like babies who need milk and, not, and cannot eat solid food. Next verse, please. We'll go down into 14, 13, 14. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are what? Mature. Who through what now? Training. Have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. Who through training? Who through training? Let's see the KJV for this verse 14. The New King James. Regular King James maybe. All right, for this 14. It says, strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of what? Use. By reason of use. By reason of use. The interesting thing with faith is many people assume they don't have it. All right? Oh, I don't have faith like Pastor Yemi. All right? I don't have faith like my zonal pastor. I don't have faith. No, that's because you assume you don't, but you do. Romans chapter 12 and then the third verse. Romans chapter 12 verse 3. You have to use it. All right? So not knowing that you have it is a major hindrance many people have. Romans 12 3 says, For I say through the grace given to me to everyone that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to, but to think soberly. Can you read that last part with me, please? One, two, go. As God has dealt to each one, so did God give each person, so every one of us has faith. What do you do with it? Use it. Use it. Use it. Galatians chapter number 3 and then verse 20. Galatians chapter 3 and then verse 20. Paul says that I have been crucified. Galatians 2.20. Thank you. My mind was already reading it off. Galatians 2 and then verse 20. Thank you. I have been crucified with who? Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live how? By the faith of the Son of God or by faith in the Son of God who loved me. So the Christian life is a life of faith. You have it. So the life you are living now is the faith of Christ running through you. Why? Because God gave it to you. So some people think, oh, but I don't have faith. You couldn't have been born again without faith. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Ephesians 2 and 8. We would read quite a number of Bible verses like Pastor said we're teaching. So you need to look through it. Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. All right? And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. People have asked, which one is the gift of God? The faith or the grace? Both. All right? Because grace is God's gift. And faith is also God's gift to you to be able to pull what grace has made available. All right? So by grace you have been saved through what? So nobody here that is born again got born again without faith. So when you got born again with that, with that faith, it didn't run away. All right? You got born again through faith. That means the faith with which you got born again is still in you. It's there. It's there, but like Romans 12, 3 said, it's there in a measure. What do you now do with the measure? You grow it. Okay? You grow it. 
Imagine if I walk into a gym and I just walk about the gym speaking in tongues. After six months, would I have heavy biceps and all? But I went to the gym. Did I not go to the gym? And so why don't I have muscles that is very big? Because I didn't do what I was supposed to do there. All right? I didn't use my muscles. You might see someone that is skinny this year and five years later the person is built. Have you met people like that? Did God send muscles from heaven? It was the one they already had that they used. So while you are busy admiring someone else's faith, you do not realize that your own can be like that if only you can begin the process. Start using it. You have to use it. All right? Because sometimes people just have very big dreams. God showed you a great vision. All right? You see yourself maybe as a music minister singing in front of millions of people, hundreds of thousands. People are watching you from all over the world. All right? Then one small church with 45 members invited you. You said, that's not my level. All right? You say, oh, I'm, I'm bigger than that. That's not what God is showing me. Even when God shows you, God starts you from somewhere. All right? And then you start using your faith at that level. Okay, you use your, you grow. It's by reason of use. By reason of use, you believe for things. You stretch yourself. You exercise yourself. It would amaze you. I remember many years ago, I was watching a Kenny Copeland video. I think that was, yeah, 2000. And then he said he began using his own faith by learning to believe for a pair of socks. A <laughs> pair of socks. But I said he did that. Pair of socks. Start with things like that. I said, okay, it was middle of the night, a Wednesday midnight. And then I released my faith for a pair of socks. Friday, I went to see a friend. No, Friday, I went to the office. Someone gave me a pair of socks. I was working at the church office. By Sunday, I went to call a friend. We were to go to church together. And his sister said, oh, someone gave me a set of gifts. And there was a male socks inside. I cannot wait. Do you want... So Wednesday, middle of the night, I released my faith for a pair of socks. Friday, I got one. Sunday, I got another. So I got two. But sometimes when someone tells you release your faith for something like that, I feel me. It's an insult. My faith is bigger than socks. Release it, let's see. You know, because if you say release your faith for 2K, 1K, 5K, you say me, 5K. My faith is looking for 3 million. I know it is. Use it for 1K. Let's see. Because when you need that 1K, you usually don't use your faith. Just say, oh, please, do you have 1K there? Do you have 5K there? Do you have 10K there? So you've never used your faith. Use it. Exercise it. Because it gets stronger. You become more confident in how it works by your using it. Jesus talked in the parable of the soul about the deceitfulness of riches. You find that sometimes, even when you have used it before, you now think you have outgrown it, but you never outgrow it. Never outgrow it. Always give your faith a project to work on. Always put yourself on something to do. So you don't become, you know, too... I mean, back in those days, right, you needed faith to believe for a... Remember the CD player, those CD players, those days that has three that come in front. You needed faith to get one. You need that faith to get those old school home theater. Now, your salary can buy 20 for people. So it doesn't need faith anymore. Your salary can take your whole family on vacation. Even if it's to Ghana, you can go come back. Even if it's to Ibadan, you can go. So when they talk about those things, all you do is just plan. By the time I collect my salary three times, we are fine. So you realize that you are now relaxing too much. And relying too much on things that are physical around you, you are not dependent on faith anymore. Set your faith on a project. Give your faith something to do. And usually, you don't even need to by yourself give it. The more you spend time in fellowship with God, he will show you things that need faith. He will show you pictures that will need your faith. He will show you. You can't say, ah, this thing God told me to do, if I do my salary three times, it will be complete. Usually not. You will need your faith. Anybody understanding me here? So we have to understand that faith has to be used. Have you ever gone to maybe catch a city mall or somewhere and you were driving around the car park five times? Right? Because everywhere was parked, full. They were going, looking for space. Next time, you can release your faith from the house before you get there. In the name of Jesus, I find a space. Say, why? Next, be driving around. You like driving around and wasting time? It's not fun. I've done it. It's not good. Then release your faith. All right? 
those days on OAU campus, for those of you that know what OAU campus is or where it is, you know, you have to release your faith for a bike before you get to the bus stop so that you get a bike on time. All right? And even those of you in Lagos, I don't know if it's how it used to be, but then there are cases where you release your faith. I remember, you know, someone was sharing a story back then. And just somehow, you know, because faith goes together with you walking with the Holy Spirit. On one of these days, someone released his faith and said, in the name of Jesus I'm getting a bus and I'm getting the bus on time. So it was at the bus stop, regular spot. And the Holy Ghost told him, move away from the bus stop. He said, no, this is the bus stop. Holy Spirit said, move. So he followed whatever instruction the Holy Spirit gave to him. And then a bus was coming, stopped in front of the people. They were trying to rush. And the bus just moved away from all of them and stopped in front of him. He just entered like a royal person because he was. Why? Instruction. Instruction. Instruction, direction. You follow what the Holy Spirit is telling you. Because when you say, I believe I receive, is mine in Jesus' name. Somebody knows where what you're looking for is. And he knows how you're going to get there. Because faith is not limited to just me finding scripture. You, you know, there's a way we can just treat the word of God as if it's something, you know, uh, we're playing bets. If I find one of us and find one of us and find one of us and I throw it like dice, I'll get double six. And then you are throwing the dice, you are not getting any six. Because you are treating the word like it's not a living thing. The word of God is alive. The word of God speaks. Please understand that. All right, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says the word of God is active. It's alive, sharper than any two-edged sword. So you can't just throw the word like, no, the word breathes and speaks if I could use it that way. So it means that the project you have. The Holy Spirit even knows the exact Bible verse you should use for it. Because sometimes you can say, oh, Shebi is healing now. You know the way we say Shebi, Shebi. Shebi is healing. By stripes, I'm healed. And then you're saying it for five days and nothing is happening. Then you spend time worshiping. And the Holy Ghost drops a verse like the Lord our God in the midst of you is mighty. And you start meditating and thanking him with that verse and the whole sickness will go away. You say, but why? Because Bible says in Ephesians, talking about the armor of God that there's something called the sword of the spirit which is the rhema the word of God so the Holy Spirit knows which words to use which swords to use to cut that situation right there he knows so you can begin no problem with the verses you are familiar with you can go to Google and say I need verse for fear I need something something and then you do the normal regular everyday step and we're meditating on it and we're using it but while you're doing that Stay in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You might realize that there's another verse coming up inside you. There's another verse rising up inside. Don't say no, no, no. They didn't. They, listen. There are, there are scriptures for healing in the Bible that you will not find H E A L I N G inside. Colossians 1:27. Christ in you, the hope of glory, is a healing scripture. Do you understand that? It's a healing scripture. Why? Because Christ is in me. First Corinthians 3 is you are the temple of God. It's a healing scripture. You say, how? If I'm temple, where is sickness coming to stay? First Corinthians 6 says, glorify God with your body. Sickness does not glorify God. So there are very many verses that don't have healing written inside them. So that's where relationship with the Holy Spirit comes in. But this thing again is by use. You understand? The more you apply, the more you are confident on how it works. Faith is an adventure. And you have to begin this adventure. B because, listen, I believe, I believe, and this is an encouragement to everybody here. Don't get used to hearing every other person's faith testimony. Don't get used to just sharing people's testimony. Have your own. Have your own. And it's not pride. Have your, after you say, he happened to her, he happened to her. He ha you uncle. Because sometimes there's a subtle low self-esteem in the body of Christ. You think God is good to everybody else except you. That's not God. He's your father. And you have to be convinced about how much he loves you. How much he loves you. That if nobody else is asking for anything and you ask, he will give it to you. You say, but I've tried. It didn't work. So we go back again to the foundation. Are you ready now? You have to feed your faith. Faith doesn't work by assumption. Faith works by being well fed. All right? 
well fed. How do I feed my faith? In Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So it means you cannot, you can't eat bread alone. You can't eat a by alone. You can't eat shawarma alone. What then do you eat? God's word. Why? Because the way bread is food for your physical body, the word of God is food for your spirit, and that will feed the rest of your life. So you have to live by the word. You feed on the word. All right? In John 21, Jesus was saying, asking Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? And each time Peter answered, you know I love you. Jesus will answer what? Feed my sheep. Feed my lamp. In Jeremiah chapter number 3 verse 15. Jeremiah 3 15. God said to them, I will give you pastors after my heart. Or the word shepherds there. I will give you shepherds or pastors according to my heart. What would they do to you? Feed. So people need to be fed. So that's what's happening to you tonight. That's what happens to you when you go to church. You go to the church website and everything. You're being fed. So you take that food seriously. You know, and you don't say, well, uh, we had that message four months ago. Who has eaten rice this month? Now rice, now rice. Who has eaten this month? This week. Maybe today, self. <laughs> okay, not today for all of us. Who ate this month and last month? Who eats rice every month? Why did you get tired of eating rice? Because you like rice. Uh -huh. Some of us can eat it every day. But why don't, so when they teach you faith and they come next month again and come, don't say, I've heard it before. Listen, the whole essence of faith is not in whether you heard it, is how well are you living it. The whole essence of faith is not have you heard it, is how well are you living it out. So faith, you have to feed on it. You pay attention to why. Four times in the Bible, the word of God says, the just shall live you will know now, if your parents call you three times, there's trouble. When you hear your name, Laide, Laide, Laide. How many times? Ha. And the word of God, in four places, in Habakkuk 2.4, in Romans 1.17, in Galatians, in Hebrews 10, four times the Bible kept on repeating, the just shall live by faith. If it wasn't important, it won't be repeated. The just shall live by faith. So our job is to understand that faith is how I live. Faith is how I move. If the just will live by faith, it means the just will conduct his life by faith. We conduct your finance by faith. You conduct your health by faith. You have to conduct your relationship and marriage by faith. And how does this faith work, which I'm sure you've already known, is by the word of God. So if I will live by faith, and faith comes from the word, it means I live by what? The word. So what does the word say? You have to feed yourself. Many times you are trying to, listen, if you don't eat for, how many days now? Is it two or five or seven? Would you be very, very strong? You'll be very tired and weak. If you don't feed your faith, you might try to do things with your faith and it's not getting results. I heard Ken Hagen, you know, say, Ken Hagen lived till he was 86 years old. And Ken Hagen will say he has never had a headache since 1934. Now, someone that lived till 86 never had a headache for over 50 years. What am I saying? Almost 70 years. How? It's not magic. Hagen said, I feed along the lines of faith and healing every day. Every day. Whether he's reading something from Wigglesworth, he's reading something from somewhere, that every day I'm feeding my faith. Why? You are using it every day too. So when you use it, you replenish it. You feed it. You restore it. You put it back. You are energizing it. If not... You will start blending with the way people talk. Hey, sometimes we're sick. Mm, we don't know. Mm, he can catch us. You start blending. And what was strong before? I'm sure many of us would attest to this. You, maybe, or someone else, maybe not you, seemed stronger in faith on campus than now. Where there was nothing to hold on to. Nobody to support you. Even when lecturer says there's tests and you're not ready, what do you do? 
cancel it in Jesus' name. Yeah, and the lecturer will enter class, start writing on the board. We'll do it next week. Because one brother somewhere, one sister somewhere could use faith. That same person now sees those days as child's play. Yes, you shouldn't maybe have done that that way. You should have been more responsible. But now you're in a company and then they are pushing you up and down. You forgot that you used your faith for lecturer. You forgot that you used it because you stopped using it at that level without aggression. You have to use it. You don't let it relax. You don't let it relent. Do you understand? So you feed your faith. One verse you could feed on. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Mark 9 verse 23. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. All right, can we read together please? One, two, go. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, some things are possible. All right, let's read again please. So Jesus said to him, if you can believe, most things are possible. All right, let's read now. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to the pastors. Is there a believer in this house? Oh, come on, is there a believer in this house? So I'm going to give you one minute. Speak that verse to yourself. All things are possible to me. You have a minute. I didn't say say it once. You have a minute. Say it to yourself. You have a minute. You have a minute. All things. Everything. All things. All things, all things, me, to me. If you have to stress me, you have to stress possible. You have to stress all things, all things. My baby, my marriage, whatever it is that looks impossible, whatever it is you've been told is impossible, Bible says, all things, not some things, not some things, not a few things, not most things, all, 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 all. all. Hallelujah. Amen. Did Jesus say it? Now, I know we know Jesus said it and it's there. But if we don't feed on it, it won't be real to us. If you don't spend time on it, because there's a way life will confront you. There's a way life will make you feel, listen, face reality. But that's the truth. Face what? Question is, which reality? Because there are two realities. There's a physical human reality. There's a kingdom of God reality. So you always, ask, you always have to ask yourself, which one am I facing right now? Now, there's nothing wrong in planning. Because you need to be sure, okay, I'm not assuming. But ask yourself, which reality am I facing now? Particularly when you have a word from God. When you don't, yeah, do what you need to do for that meantime. But always ask, which reality am I facing now? Doctor said this case is impossible. God said it is possible. Which one am I doing? It's easy to say, I'll do God's own. But you know when those pressures come? And Jesus, in the parable of the sower again, said when someone hears the word and there's no depth, when affliction arises because of the word, it will wither away. Because there's no depth. You need to feed yourself. Have you heard some testimonies before and they shocked you? Like, ah! What do those things do? They inspire you. So apart from feeding yourself, you inspire yourself. You hear what God is doing. But that inspiration many times might not feed you. It just lets you know God did something. I don't know if you saw the difference now. I see, oh, so God did that. I see what God did somewhere. I see what God did somewhere. So that can inspire you to go back and feed. All right? There are people that come here. Pastors who come here. I mean, we're inspired. It's not even here. Soon there was an inspiration. <laughs> Before we even found good land. Then I say, ah, see land. Inspiration. But are you caught inspiration and you don't do anything with it? Doesn't mean you can replicate it yet. True of us. Someone sharing testimony of I gave birth doesn't mean you are pregnant. You have to go and do something to become pregnant. But you were inspired. You saw it. You saw the possibility of it. So don't listen now. Hear me. Learn to inspire your faith. But don't mix the or mix up inspiration for revelation. Did you get that? Inspire your faith, but don't mix up inspiration for revelation. So someone says, ah, when I didn't have a child, 
Oh, this was what I did. I rolled on the floor seven days and my baby came. You are inspired. It means someone could tap the supernatural, all right, and then get a baby from it. But it was not a revelation for you to go and roll on the floor seven times. So when we listen to testimonies, catch the inspiration. Through it, God might speak. God might say, do likewise. Or this is what you should do. But what you need to work on is what is the revelation for me? What's God saying to me? Why? Because all things are possible. The God who said it meant it when he said it. All right? He wasn't canvassing for 2024 election when he wrote it so that I can vote for him. No, he said it before you were born. He doesn't need your votes to become God. He said, did he say it? How many things are possible to you? How many things are possible to you? How many things are possible? Now, I want you to think of that thing that looks impossible. Maybe it's a project. Maybe it's an amount of money. I'll give you 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Think of one thing, that one thing. It seems impossible. Seems impossible. Seems impossible. Now say, you are possible. Did you see something? Did you say to it? Say, say, you are possible. Say, say, you are possible. You are possible. What am I teaching you to do? Use your faith. Because many times, say, oh God, there's a mountain, there's a mountain. James, James said something interesting. James chapter 1 verse 2. Uh, chapter 4 verse 2. Please try to go over these Bible verses. If you're in the car, on your way home, or in the bus, wherever you are, type, type these things on your phone, all right? Even if you have to skip the screen for a while to type and come back to watch it, please do it so that you have the scriptures to go over them. All right? And if you're in the comfort of a home, blessed are you, you can get a notepad or something and write down. James said, you lost and you don't have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have simply because as simple as this is, it's big revelation. NLT. As simple as this is, it's a big revelation. NLT, please. Thank you. N NLT, thank you. You want what you don't have, and most of us do, almost all of us. You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill for it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them, yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. You'll be amazed, and I don't know if some of us here might fall into the category tonight, but it's okay if you do. We're learning the world so we can improve, okay? Watch this. You might be surprised that you are busy wishing and hoping, but you've not opened your mouth to say, Father, in Jesus' name. Many of us have not even crossed stage one. You never ask. I remember there was a time we were believing for a car for months, and God said, are you believing for a car? I said, yes. I said, he said are you sure? I said, yes. He said, did you release your faith for a car? I said, ah. <laughs> I said, ah, okay. <laughs> I got home, met my wife, and I said, let's release our faith together. <laughs> In intentionally, yes, sir. In two weeks, someone out text and said, I, I thought you have a car. God said we should do something about a car for you. Months without car. You know, when we like to say, you know, I'm believing God for, you know, I'm believing God, I'm believing God. The God you are believing say, excuse me, I don't have record. <laughs> On my file, you've not opened your mouth to say anything. Is that helpful to someone right now? Look at it here. You have not because, and you they jealous, you they scheme, you they fight, you they. Someone is getting promoted at the office, you are mad, you are angry. You're... Oh boy. You never ask. And you are angry, you are frustrated, you are scheming your way, you are, you know, doing all sorts. You just never ask. Say, so you are not having. First stage. Maybe someone needs to quickly take a minute and process that thing right now. What, are you sure you have asked? Are you sure? Yeah, and even quickly ask right now. It doesn't take 10 minutes. All right? Check yourself. That thing you say you're waiting for, have you asked? I didn't say, have you complained? I didn't say, hey, God, God, I don't understand. I've prayed for 10 eh, That's complaining. Have you asked? Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, this is what I have. And this is what I see here. So I desire it and I pray and I ask for it in Jesus' name. Is this helping you? 
Because not asking means you have not used your faith. And like I said, the summary tonight is what? Use it. Faith has to be used. Let's show you how Jesus said it. Mark eleven twenty four. Mark eleven twenty four. So Jesus is saying here, I tell you, when you pray, let, let's do King James on this one. I, I, I like some words I want to play out from the King James. Thank you. Therefore I say unto you, what thing soever you desire, when you pray, what should you do? Believe you receive them and you shall what? There are four stages in this verse. Therefore I say to you, what thing soever you what? Stage one. Do you have a desire? Stage two is what now? So you now, that's the stage James was addressing. Ask. So Jesus said, when you desire, number one, then pray. You know, so when we say, God will give you what to pray for, yes, but there's a clause. What things soever you desire, when you pray, what's the next step? Uh, not believe. It's not complete if you say believe. Read the whole phrase. Believe that you, stage three, stage four. Let me quickly say this. Believing you receive them is different from having them. I'll say it again. Believing you receive is different from having. You say why? Believing you receive is a physical, spiritual dimension. It is a believe you receive. It's spiritual. It will not lead to the physical dimension of have. So some of us want to cross from desire, pray to having. You are missing the clause. Believe you have received. Believe you have received. Let's practice. Say, I believe that I receive. Say, I believe that I receive. I believe that I receive. Meaning when you pray, what should you do? Believe you what? So when I believe I receive it, what should be my next response? Say that again. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is easier when you cross that bar. Because you do what? Believe you have received. The word receive there means to take. So believe you have taken it. So say, but I'm waiting for the manifestation. Many of us are waiting for manifestations of things we have not believed we have received. I know it's Christian lingua. I know I still also get guilty of it. But I'll play with it a bit. You'll get it. There is a difference, sincerely. sincerely. But sometimes we still use it and we, we know what we're saying. But really, there's a difference technically. There's a difference between I am believing God for and I believe I receive. <laughs> I am believing God for I'm, I'm, I'm in a process. <laughs> Hope, sir. <laughs> I'm believing you. How far your job? You know, I'm believing. He didn't say be believing. He said, believe you have received it. Who is getting that? Say, I believe that I receive. Say, I believe that I receive it. I believe that I receive it. Say, I believe that I take it. I believe I've taken it. I believe. That it's mine. Now, sometimes, and let me say this practically, arriving at that point might take you some meditation. Arriving at that point sometimes might even take you some process of praying in tongues. Because that belief you receive in certain instances might require that knowing inside of you, I got it. All right? There's a general one of, I just pray the prayer. You're not waiting for a feeling, and I get that. All right? But I'm saying because there's an assumption in faith, and that's why I'm trying to teach this carefully. You could think, oh, okay, let, let's, let's practice something funny. Please close your eyes if you don't mind. Imagine a car outside coming to pick you up. I don't know what your favorite color is, but it's an SUV, your favorite color. The driver opens the door, and then it just drives you to the airport. And then it gets there, but it doesn't go to the general place. It goes to the private plane side. You don't even know what it looks like. Just put it inside your imagination, whatever it looks like. Just be going. Follow the car. All right, guess what? Someone opens the door. They put you in the lounge. They give you coffee or juice or malt, whichever one you like. Put it there. 
All right. Then they now tell you, your plane is ready. Then they usher into a private plane. You never seen that before. Don't worry. Put whatever is inside your imagination. Then sat down. It was a private jet. And it took you to Abuja for a conference. And by the time you landed, you changed to your Agbada or your... Oh, yeah, open your eye. Where are you? Abuja or... Uh, okay. <laughs> now, as simple as that thing is, there's a spiritual undertone there. Many of us, what we say here does not agree with what we say here. And faith has to work with it too to work. So that's why I said you could learn the principles but you miss them but you have to be open to adjusting. So as simple as imagination is we travel, travel, we came back but we are still here. You can fill up an empty shop with what I just said. You say how? Because you are seeing some... Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning was the world, I mean in the beginning God Created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Darkness was perfect, so deep. And the Spirit of God did what? Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. You don't say something is good if you don't have a picture you're comparing it with. So God saw something, and He spoke what He wanted and said, Hmm, good. He's comparing it with something. And God kept on going and kept on saying, Good. He's comparing it with something. That's why when they were building the Tower of Babel, sir. God said, let's quickly go and stop them. Because nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. They set a picture in their minds. So if your faith is, I believe I'm married. But after you have said it, you say, mm, if I don't marry this year, I'll marry next year. So something in your mind is not agreeing with what you're saying. Is that helping someone now? Something is not agreeing. So that's why meditation now comes in. To simmer into you what you believe you want to believe for. That's why sometimes it's advised. Take a few days and meditate on the promises of God concerning that thing. Now this might not be so in everybody's case. But three days ago you prayed and believed you received. There's one text prayer to you. Ah, in Jesus' name, that thing you're waiting for, God will do it all. And you tell, Amen. I thought three days ago, you believe you have received. So did you believe you've received? Then two days after, someone has said, That thing you're looking for, God will do it all. Amen, sister. Amen. Be praying along, be praying along, be praying along. I thought five days ago, you believe you received it. I thought. So we're not maturing because we're not learning how to use it. Now, there are times, and understand this, when God sends a prophet your way, God sends a minister your way, and you know in your heart. Are you getting it? But knowing in my heart is different from I'm being swayed by every wind of prayer on something I have claimed that I believe I have received. Sir, please, you asked for it, I gave it to you. Let's assume. So have you received it? No, please sit there. Then, then you ask for it again. Why? Because you have received it. If you have received it. <laughs> Is this in clear? So you have, it has to be settled in your heart. So that's why sometimes, listen, sometimes you meditate for days. For it to see mine, for it to sink. You are taking a walk at night. You are sitting down. You come back. You are sitting down. You turn off TV. Turn off soccer. Listen, all the money they collect, one, one she. One she, she, no enter your account. Do you understand? I know we're excited. We love the games. It's okay. It's not, it's not a sin. But we keep watching them. We, are, we might not make progress if we don't do something with our own lives. We can argue, go and slap someone inside Baba shop. No, not my team. No, be your team. At the end of the day, they, they didn't share bonus with you. So we need to face where the reality is. Our popular movie, popular series, all those actors have collected their pay, tay, tay, before they showed you that film. You need to go and work on yourself. 
take a walk in the evening. Like Pastor said last week, sometimes turn off phone. Whatever notification you miss, you can read it 10 hours later. Whatever person's video you didn't see, you can see later. Take out time. Listen, every spiritual giant gives time to meditation. And they were not meditating, so they now became giants. I mean, they were not meditating when they became giants. They started it when nobody knew them. If you check the Psalms of David, David was not popular. You even know the story. David wasn't popular when he killed bear. He wasn't popular when he killed lion. Nobody even saw him. Nobody knew. But he was working it. And when Goliath came, he was ready. Is this helping somebody? You have to meditate. That all things are possible now. Put it there. That verse would help almost every, pro every project all of us want to deal with. Every project. All things are possible. Everything is possible. All things are possible. Sometimes you turn off radio. They are not paying you to listen to it. Turn off music. Turn off things to shut down and give attention to the word. Are you getting this, please? Your faith would rest easily when you understand the word. Thank you, sir. Ma Matthew, <laughs> Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. Please go over these Bible verses, please, again, all right? Particularly those of us not physically here. I can see a lot of people here taking notes, and that's really good. If you then, being evil, no, okay, let's just start from verse 9. All right, we'll read from verse 9 down to 11. What man is there of you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if his son asks for fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give bad things, good things to them that do what again? Ask him. Ask him. What's the correlation? Be asking on the word. That's why I'm connecting meditation to it. John 15, verse 7. John 15, verse 7. Jesus said here, If you abide in me, and my words abide where? In you. You will do what? Ask whatever you want, and it will be done. If there's something you and I will do for ourselves, this evening, put more of the word inside you. Load up. Once again, that Mark 9.23, all things are possible to me. All things are possible. How many things are possible? How many things are possible? How many things are possible? Who are all things possible to? I see how I'm pulling up some words there now. You play with all. You play with me. You play with possible. Just pull it. Pull it. Pull it. I know some of us have the luxury of driving home. Sometimes turn off the radio. Drive in silence and meditate. Some of you who walk home, blessed are you. All right? It's not a crime to walk. Those days I used to walk, <laughs> I loved it. All right? Sometimes you walk because you didn't have. It's okay. It's just a season. Use it. And you're meditating. You're speaking the word. You're speaking the word to yourself. There's nothing wrong. If you take a bus, find a quiet Don't always enter a bus looking for someone to talk to. Enjoy quietness. Enjoy silence. Enjoy quiet moments in your bedroom. You say, oh, but I live in, all of us are saying together. No problem. Enter the bathroom. Lock yourself there for 20 minutes. Be quiet there. Stay there in the bathroom. And be meditating. Close the toilet seat. Sit comfortably on it if you can. If there's more space, you can sit on the floor if it's clean. It's your home. It should be. And meditate. Abraham saw three men coming to him while he was sitting under a tree. What was he doing there? Isaac saw camels bringing his wife. The Bible said he was in the field meditating. These men gave attention to it. All things are possible to me. Everything is possible to me. Father, you said it. I believe it. All things are possible to me. And I wish I could tell you that after three days, it might click. Sometimes no. Sometimes yes. Nobody controls the thing. But what you are looking for is for it to click inside. And this is the beauty of meditation. When you meditate on God's word for one area, it spills into other areas. Oh, I've seen that. One area, it just starts entering another. Because the word is life. 
As you meditate on it, it just starts breathing life. You were meditating for finance, your health started getting better. You were meditating on health, favor for money just came. You say, ah, I wasn't even praying about it because the word is life. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 says, for they are life to those that find them, not read them. They are life to those that find them and medicine to all your flesh. So by staying on the word, it's life. Just giving attention to it. Would anybody meditate? Would you meditate? You say, by no sabi meditate. Oh. <laughs> Do you know how to worry? Now, anybody here worried before? That is meditation. You're just meditating on the wrong content. Wrong energy. Is it simple like that? The way, hey, my wedding. Ah, clothes, my wedding. And some of you, that wedding is in five years' time. See how the mind works. You went for someone's wedding. Some people were not getting food. From there, your mind just travel. On my own wedding day, oh, ah, would there be food? Ah, on my wedding day, oh. you, are not even en- you are not engaged. But just food, are you getting that? You know, because sometimes people think, how do I meditate? That's meditation. You are chewing things in your mind. So when that thing comes, ah, my wedding, my wedding, and my God will supply all my needs. My wedding will be okay. Do you understand? You are, who got what I just said? So don't let that thought just stay on. Ha, 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 ha. You see someone's child. Ah, hey, God, I don't want my children to suffer. No. My, and then you put a verse. I've been young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed back from. You just bring something and meditate. So you change the content. The same way you were worrying. Ah, they, they, they didn't pick their phone. I don't know if they have a right where they are. Don't stop there. He will give his angels charge over them. Put the word there. So meditation is just worry in reverse. All right? It's just worry or worry rather is meditation in reverse. Meditation on the negative things. To stay on the word. It will help you. But like I said again, summary is use your faith. And one area we've touched since is the asking part. Ask God. But the other part of using your faith Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. This place also is amazing. Jesus said, for assuredly I say to you, whoever will say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and will not doubt in his heart, but believes that the things he says will come to pass. What will happen to him? We, we know this verse, don't we? But the question is, how many times do we do it? And sometimes we do it unconsciously. Some of you yab your laptop, this stupid laptop. Hope one day you not even make me lose interview. Look at how the verse ended though. Verily I say unto you, so if I will say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. And does not doubt in his heart, but believes the things he says will be done. He will have whatever. So when next you say stupid laptop, just hear yourself say, I have whatever I say. No be so. This child, now you go kill me. I have whatever I say. Is that not what Jesus said? The issue with the body of Christ is this. We are applying this alone in prayer. It wasn't about prayer alone. Whatever you say every day is happening to you. That's what he's saying there. Matthew chapter 12. All right, Matthew 12, 35. Matthew 12, 35. Now, let's just do 36. Let's just move on. Let me not stay here. Can you read with me? One, two, go. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it when? Did he say words you speak when you pray? No. Words you speak every day. All these my rubbish clothes. Tear, tear clothes. This you say, hope one day you don't embarrass me. Every I do word you speak, you'll give account. Next verse, please. Now, 37. Skip to one verse. Thank you. For by your words, what will happen? By your words, again, you will be what? So through your words, you are justified through your words. So question, what are you saying? Because you said something. Oh, stupid car. Stupid job. Stupid office. You said he said it. You now have to pray. Oh, Father, according to your word. Nah, hold on. All the ones you have been saying since morning too were counting. That's the verse. 
For by your words you are justified. So sometimes many of us have spoken too many negative things. You know what I said? But Bible says I have what I say. That's what's going on. You're having what you said. But I said in prayer, no, check the last 24 hours. Not the one you said in two minutes. So you're trying to override what you've been saying for eight years in two minutes. And look at this funny part. Have you ever been angry and said something out of anger? And sometimes you realize that the energy you said it while you were angry, you didn't use that same energy when you were praying. Who is getting it? When you were angry, you said it. If I live my life, I don't want to see you again. I don't care. Go and die. You, you meant it when you said it. Then I say, Father, in Jesus' name, I want a new car. The energy for the negative one was stronger. Translate. Be angry or sin not. Connect. Use that anger not on people now but on the enemy. Because it's the one keeping your blessings away from you. Use that anger not on people. Not on relationships. Not on your employees at work. Use that anger to that mountain in front of you. Because many times when many of us talk to the mountain, we're not serious about it. We're not energized. You're not angry. You're not angry. So in Tugu saw a woman at the bus stop and her puppy was following her. And she was saying, go, go, go. Puppy will walk there. Nying, nying, nying. Go now, go now. Nying, 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 nying. And then she now went, go! <laughs> and the puppy just ran. We go so shouted, that's how you treat the devil! Hallelujah! But you realize that many of us are not that, in, we, we, are, we are angry. Have you seen some orgasms when they enter office? What rubbish! What nonsense! <laughs> then you have a mountain in your life, you don't channel that same anger, wrong energy. That anger was not for human beings. It was for the enemy. It's for the accuser of your bedroom. Channel that anger and speak to that mountain. You can't sign the name of Jesus. Bible says how God anointed us. He went about doing good. He, for this reason, the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the enemy. Use that anger like Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying now? One sickness started yesterday. It was here. Now he's here. Now he's here. Now he's here. Let me just stay at home for three days. Stay. But stay to do what? Get angry. Because that thing that started for three days has kept some people for three months. That thing that started for three days has turned to incurable for some people. Get angry now. He said, but it's just boil. It will go in. Mm -mm -mm. Anger. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Sickness and Holy Ghost don't co cohabitate. They don't coexist. Do you understand? Get angry at poverty. Get angry at laziness. Get angry at lethargy. Get angry. Because Jesus said, if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and you don't doubt in your heart, but believe that the thing you say will happen. It means there was an energy. Do you understand? You said it, you meant it. Because mountains are be who's serious. Who. Mountain knows who's serious. You speak to some mountains, they'll look at you like you didn't say anything. Better stand there and command. Are you getting me? Talk in tongues for three days if you want to command again. No? As in, because the thing, listen. It wants to check your energy level. Check your persistence level. And you have to be persistent. If you ask pastor, he'll tell you stories about prayer. Yeah, prayer, fasting, prayer. His energy is fight. You know, at this church, they just, they grow. Then they grow. Then they grow. But how are they growing? Nights in this place, praying, studying, speaking the word. Because God is not the one holding back the thing from you. The enemy doesn't want you to get it. Oh, but Bible says he will give you a table set with good things in the presence of the enemy. So you have to be aggressive. This table, I'm chopping it. Do you understand? This health, I'm taking it. This favor is mine. In the name of Jesus. Do you understand this now? Let's tie this up. Has this been helpful? So please just go over it. Please, and just listen. Faith has to be used. 
And the more you use it, the better you get with it. All right? The more you use it, the more proficient you become. They're getting aggressive. It's typhoid. They give you drugs. Take your drug. But the issue with many of us is when you now take the drug, you leave it. And I say, our doctor said I'll be okay in three days. But let's pray. No, no, doctor said now. Shabby, doctor said I'll be okay. Three days now passes. Now I say, ah, let's pray. Thank God it's never too late. All right? But sometimes as if we've allowed the thing to travel too far. Let's get aggressive now. All right? Take that pill. You want to use it. Say, in the name of Jesus. Bible says, I'll say to the mountain. So, buddy, you're at the mountain here. I say, as I take this drug, it works for me. Buddy, you respond. You heal up supernaturally. You heal up quickly. After I just realized that, you don't even need that thing again. But it started with it. And you built yourself. And the way sometimes God will do it for some people, they will now travel and forget the drug at home. And I say, ha, ha, ha. But for two days, they were, okay, oh. I didn't even know the word has worked. Are you getting that? Because you are growing your faith. I beg you. Don't tolerate the devil in any little way. Like they say, give him an inch. It takes a mile. Fight. Fight. Be aggressive. Use your faith. Use your faith. And please pray in the spirit a lot. You know when you pray in tongues, you feel bold. You feel like you're walking in the cloud. <laughs> pray in tongues a lot. Let's do another one minute. We have a few minutes. Can I sneak in one minute? Just pray in tongues. One minute. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Please, can I have someone on the... Yeah, okay. I can see you. Thank you. <laughs> Just stay there. All right? We're almost done. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, don't stop, all right? Thank you. Just low, but don't stop. Two things I'm closing with. Remember, I believe I receive. Say it again, I believe I receive. Say, I believe I receive. Say, it's mine. Now, just for summary sake, two areas have encouraged us tonight to act on our faith. Number one is to ask in prayer. But number two also is to speak to the mountain. When you ask in prayer, you must believe you receive. Just go over all the scriptures again. James taught us something similar. He said, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask from God. God gives to all men freely. God will not break. But the next verse was interesting. He said, but let him ask in faith. I need wisdom. He still say, ask in faith. Nothing doubting. Ask in faith. So how do I ask in faith? That's what Jesus now taught us in that Mark 11. You have to believe you receive it. So when I believe I receive, I start thanking God. My praise level affects my faith level. And my faith level affects my praise level. All right? Sometimes even when you're not sure you believe you receive, start praising him first. One energy will just start climbing up inside. You understand what I'm saying? Just start climbing. Thank you, Father. You said it will be done. It will be done. You said it will be done. I believe it. Even if you're still playing around hope for it, no problem. Just be praising him. Oh, thank you because it will be done. Thank, just that, that praise level, climbing up. Starts affecting your hope level. Starts affecting your faith level. And in the reverse also, your strong faith level would always produce praise. So when a believer is thankless, doesn't express gratitude, your faith level is questionable. That you believe you receive is, do you understand? Sometimes you even dance over that thing to a point where when it finally happens, you're not dancing again. People now think, are you not grateful? You don't dance, eh? Ah, as in you, <laughs> I don't know if anybody has been there before. You so rejoiced like you got it, that when you finally got it, physically I've moved to another project. Because you dance, dance, and you pray, you, oh, glory, thank you. And sometimes it's not even gra gra praise, but it's energetic and quiet. Father, thank you. Father, and you're pacing, thank you. 
tears are dropping down your eyes because of doctor's report, but you are going, thank you. He took my infirmities. He carried away my sicknesses. Oh, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I can see this report of oh, you took my infirmities. Tears are dropping. Tears. So, you, so, you know, because sometimes everybody might not be able to start with a dance. But everybody can start with words. By him, therefore, Hebrews tells us in chapter 13, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually with the fruit of our lips, giving thanks. You, you now realize that the more you are doing it, dance can start coming. Sometimes laughter starts coming. You know, joy starts bubbling. But you took a step of faith to thank him. Your praise level affects your faith level. Your faith level affects your praise level. Paul and Silas at midnight. They prayed, they sang praises. Then the prison opened. It wasn't they prayed, the prison opened, then they sang praises. They sang praises, then the prison opened. Do you understand that? Do you believe you receive? Is God good to us? Can we just lift our hands and thank you? Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Do you want to thank him for your job? You want to thank him for that provision? You want to thank him for your children? You want to thank him? We thank you. 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 If there's something you've prayed about that you believe you have received praise from that point. Oh, thank you. It's mine. I believe I receive it. I believe it's mine. I believe I receive it. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you. As you're thinking in pictures of it, to so start dropping. Instructions will come from the Holy Ghost. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We believe we receive increase. We believe we receive fruitfulness. We believe we receive establishment and flourishing. We believe we receive joy. We believe we receive abundance. We believe we receive protection. We believe we receive provision. We believe. 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 I believe I receive. It's mine. Hallelujah. The babies are mine. The job is mine. The good home is mine. Good health is mine. Long life is mine. Angelic protection is mine. Thank you, Father, for the covenant. Thank you for the blood. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. Praise him with a shout. Praise him with a dance. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Our God is good. Our God is good. Praise him. Praise him. Come on, praise him at home. Praise him in the car right now. Praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you praising him? Go ahead. Pray the Holy Ghost. Shout. Scream. If you want to scream. If you're in a solo, you can scream. A rainbow, you can scream. If you're in Surulere, you can scream. Exhibit joy, joy, excite, excitement in the Holy Ghost. Manda, yeah, 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 yeah. Karaba, Ikorodu, you can scream. You can shout. If you're in your office, there's a delay because of traffic, you can scream. Praise Salabadaka, Makla Kotoza, Vera Karaba Kosanana, Makoroda La Kaprakataza. Ava la de kosada, marada kesa la brade kodana, mendo se pre de kazata. Ah, you can make declarations. I know what to do. I know what steps to take. The Holy Spirit is guiding me. I know what steps to take. I know what steps to take. I'm not stranded. Kela baya, mandorosa kala bada, ava dala kosanda la bada. There is a word. I know the word. I have the direction. Don't be idle tonight. That's why you are here. We are building. We are building capacity.
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are not confused. We have direction. We know what to do. We have illumination. We have light. We rejoice. We rejoice. Can someone just say, Lord, I thank you for Isaiah 54 verse 3. It's working for us. We are breaking forth on every side. That is one of the major scriptures the Lord gave us for the year. You are breaking forth on every side. You are expanding on every side. We believe it. We believe it. We thank you for Isaiah 54 verse 3. It's working for Global Impact Ministries. It's working for every one member, every one person, every partner of this ministry. We're expanding. We are not limited. We are not held back. Your business is expanding. You are breaking forth into new realms. Ayalana katala rabakasa, mara katala madakota, bala dakota kasada, mara dakora takase, bala dakosa rabada, makala daya, bala dosta. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are taking over Lagos. We are taking over Nigeria. Can you say that? He said, your people will inherit the nations and turn the cities around. We are taking over the land. We are forcefully advancing. We are not limited. We are not limited. You are not limited. Ah, ah, you are not small anymore. Breaking forth. You shall expand. We are expanding. Global Impact Churches. Global Impact Ministries, Global Impact Members, Global Impact Individuals, Global Impact Families, you expanded. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you just wave? Okay, just wave. Thank you, Lord. The limits in our mind removed hallelujah in Jesus mighty name are you blessed tonight you can put your hands together thank you thank you Holy Spirit wow you may please have your seat um, can we appreciate the ministry of uh, Pastor Larry Onosaya for being a blessing to us tonight are you clapping your hands are you celebrating if you're in any of the centers make sure you are jubilating and celebrating God says, I mean, his word says in Micah 4, he will teach us of his ways. I remember, I don't know whether it was two weeks ago, when I said, if you there's a challenge, you ask the Holy Spirit to give you a word. Because uh, by stripes you are healed, might not be what you will, will sort you out. In fact, the moment the Holy Spirit gives you that word, it births faith inside you. It's a personal word. So you can see in Acts of the Apostles, something that has to do with business explosion. I remember saying that to us. That word becomes personal. Isaiah 35, I think verse 1 to 3. When we're moving to the good land, I remember I was asking him, I mean, yeah, you have brought us here. He gave us the name. From Deuteronomy 8, we had those revelations. But I needed more reinforcement. And I remember I was asking him, how will this place turn around? I need a word. A word I can use to disturb him. <laughs> You know that kind of thing that will energize my faith. 35 verse 1, please. The wilderness and the wasteland shall be what? I mean, if you were here then, I, I used to say it a lot. I, and, and then the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. So I remember I would come here. Lord, the, the, this place is blossoming. A rose means a beautiful place. It's deserted, it's desolate, it's dirty, it's... Or one kind, but it becomes a rose, a beautiful place. I only God knows how many thousands of times I, I made that statement. It shall the wilderness shall blossom as a rose. And I've started seeing development here. I think the next verse. It shall what? Blossom abundantly and rejoice, even with joy and singing. The glory of the of Lebanon shall be given to it. I remember I used to say the excellence of Camel and Sharon. I had to study that Camel and Sharon, the beauty beauty, you know, they shall see the glory of the Lord, the excellency of our God. Verse 3. 
strengthen the weak hands, make firm. So this was part of the assignments we did then to build leaders, to strengthen people. But to turn the wilderness into a beautiful place, that verse 1 and 2 was a major prayer and declaration that the wilderness shall blossom as a rose. It shall blossom abundantly. So whatever it is, fruit of the womb, business exploits, work with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, give me a word. It might just show you a word that you already you are thinking about. Fine. But when that word is quickened in you, it becomes like a receipt, a title deed, that this is what God will do. I remember, I mean, talking about Isaiah 54 verse 1, right? Remember when we were uh, building the dome that um, it says, sing, O barren. The Holy Ghost gave me that word. And it doesn't have, it has nothing to do with building, right? But money came from it. So please don't think a general scripture is your own. When it comes to a particular situation, there's a word that comes to you about your marriage, about your health, about the future, about 2024. Yes, we have some verses for the church, but God can give you some, you know, extra verses for your home. Uh, Psalms 112, I think I've said it severally, our family is something we use. The Holy Ghost quickened it in my heart. It's ingrained in my system. But you might need a word for your own household. Psalms 112. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who what? So when I'm declaring, Lord, I have the rich supply of reverence for the Lord in my heart by the Holy Spirit. Without the fear of the Lord, you misbehave as a man. You misbehave. Reverential fear, not demonic fear. So I, I declare, I bless the man who fears the Lord, and I declare over the family, over the children, that they walk in the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, who delights greatly in his word, that we delight greatly in his commandment, in his word. Okay, verse 2. His descendants, uh, his seed, his children, will be mighty where? This is, I, I believe it, that all our children, well, now it's not just biological children, even spiritual children, so you'll be mighty on the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that is a part of this ministry, I believe you are destined to be mighty. That's that word. It's, it's in my blood. It says his descendants. One version says his seed. Another one says his children will be mighty. So I see the children as mighty people, not that uh, they will struggle in the future. It says the generation of the upright will be what? Blessed. So the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, they are blessed. Glory to God. Next verse. Wealth and riches are where? This one, as he said it this today, during this fast. Wealth and riches are in our house. In the Davis family, wealth and riches, not problems and sorrow. Wealth and riches are the things that we find. I, I didn't write it, but I love it. And I receive it. Wealth and riches is in our house. Our righteousness endures forever. I'm a new covenant person. I stand by the blood of Jesus Christ. Next verse. Unto the opera that arises light. Where? We are never confused. Lord, in our family, we know what to do next. Dark areas, confused. When we are making decisions, we have light. Holy Ghost will give us light. Okay? It's gracious and full of what? Compassion and righteous. Now, a good man does what? Graciously and he will guide his affairs with what? Discretion. Discretion. I remember I used to declare it. All our family decisions, all the steps we take, we use discretion. Discretion. Very important. Without discretion, you can make mistakes. Verse 6. Surely he will, he will never be what? Shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. Verse 7. He will not be what? But you like a binding fear. That fear will not affect our home. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Verse 8. His heart is established. He will not be afraid. See, I'm not afraid. Until he sees the desire upon his. So enemies can't do us anything. That's what I believe for our household, okay? Uh, verse 9, he has dispersed abroad. I give a lot. We give a lot. We disperse. We call it, it's called dispersal grace. We spread out, especially as the Holy Ghost says, bless that family, bless that ministry, bless that person. He has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness is not uh, and just forever. His horn will be exalted. I still said that one today. The Davis family horn is exalted with honor. The Global Impact Ministries horn is exalted with honor. Glory to God. And then he said, the wicked, when you are getting exalted like that, enemies begin to react. Okay? Says the wicked will see it and be what? Grieved. They will only gnash their teeth, but they will melt away. Their desire will perish with them. 
That's our family sound. I've said it in church. The other ones that God is adding. So there's a word for your business future. There's a word concerning that. And when the Holy Ghost quickens it in your heart, it stays with you. Now, you, the Holy Spirit cannot quicken if you have not loaded up. So the foundation of all these things is what we call Bible study. Be loading it. Be loading it. Be learning it. The day you are now asking the Holy Spirit, show me something. It will not pick what you have. If I didn't know Psalms 112 forever before, it might be hard for the Holy Ghost to quicken it. I'd known Isaiah 54 before. It's there somewhere. So load up. We are studying Acts of the Apostles this month. Load up. You can't tell which verse, which illustration the Holy Spirit will use one day for your grandchild, for your health. Keep loading up. Give Holy Spirit enough resources to use every day when the time comes. Praise the Lord. Uh, thank you, Pastor Rex, for blessing us. Let's also avoid alternatives. Um, now, this is my personal faith. It might not be yours. One day I bought some box, got some box of um, paracetamol, a lot. So, I, you know, as I put it in the wardrobe, in the drawer, the Holy Spirit said, well done. You have already prophesied plenty of headaches for yourselves. That's me. I don't know about you. Because you're going to use it. You pull the use. You have created the solution, so you pull the problem. So I don't know what alternatives you have unknowingly created to service the enemy's line. People do it unknowingly in the name of I'm preparing, I'm planning. You pull it. In fact, it encourages the enemy because you, 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 a whole pack. It's like say I'm going to have headaches regularly. So I have enough tablets, tablets to use. So I, have to, I just let it go. Yeah, I use paracetamol at times, but it's not loaded. You have to get it somewhere, you know. You don't create, you know, <laughs> you don't create um, the coffins because you want to die on time. So you'll be calling yourself to go there. So now I'm not saying you should not. Now let, let me balance it this way. Like HMO and all those things. When you are doing those things, make sure you watch your heart. If they are telling you in a staff meeting, this HMO we have when you have this problem, so you're in your heart you're thinking, ah, that means when I have a problem, there's an answer. Ah, you are, you are going to have the problems. Receive the HMO as an added blessing you know, as a staff, but don't let it enter your heart. If it enters your heart, you will need it. <laughs> because you will use it. Am I understanding each other? Anything you create you will pull the need. So watch out when you are dealing with those things. I mean, there are things that, I mean, like writing will now. Do you know I can be writing my will now with the fear of I will soon die? And I can be writing my will now with a sense of responsibility, managing God's resources. There are two different things. Am I making sense? Are you okay, eh? No, because people don't know these things. You can be writing will. You can go to a seminar and the teacher about writing will. That if you just die now, we will do your dinner. And you can be doing the will if your heart is saying, "Ah, I can die at any time." It's dangerous for you. You are pulling that to your. But you can write will as a sense of responsibility as a great steward. Now I had to deal with one some years ago, and I'm grateful I saw it. If you save for rainy day, the rain will fall and clear your savings. I save for investment purposes. And I, I, when I save, I use it for good things. But if your own mindset is, I say, any problem can come at any time. So I'll be prepared. Problems will be taking your savings. It's your heart. All you share today, sir, a lot has to do with the heart. If those things have not been received in the heart, when you declare, it might not work. Or you even doubt it yourself. So let's work on things that will help our heart. That's why I said, guard your heart. With what? That's where the work is. I'm not saving for rainy day. I'm not saving that, ah, hey, my car will just spoil anytime, so I have enough money to pay the mechanic. You have just invited many problems. No, I'm saving for investment purposes. I'm saving as a responsible steward. So saving is not a bad thing. For, for what? It is not a bad thing, but for what? Don't store drugs in your house like you are waiting for sickness to appear. Don't call it. God forbid that you have a health challenge that tablets cannot handle. That's where faith cannot break down because you have been depending on those alternatives too much. Now when something else shows up that tablet cannot handle, what do you do?
So this covers many areas. Can you use it as a positive? You are trusting God to get married. Like pastor said, imagine. It's okay to fantasize the word. Is that a worry? Is it not better? To keep imagining your wedding day. It's better, self. But see what happens to you. I imagine a lot. Too. This, this, this thing you said about private jet today, it will happen. Me. I, I saw myself. I went to the airport. Because I, I mean, I travel. So I, and I know the way where they, they do it. I've seen it before. I just looked at them. I, uh, but today I entered the place, right? Uh -huh. And I sat down. It was coffee. I, I, I received coffee, right? Coffee without sugar and milk, right? Just, you know, I, and, I, and, I, and I was reading a magazine, right? And I was starting. The was responding to me, you know? <laughs> And I was responding, and then they said, sir, the, the flight is ready. And I saw the plane some, you know, some, on the tarmac somewhere, and I just picked the bag. Okay, maybe you follow, right? Maybe. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then we entered the place, and then we zoomed to Abuja. And I, said, I remember I sat down in that plane, right? I said, Lord, thank you. Glory to God. Our, our trip to Abuja is very safe. Only there's only Abuja we will go. We will go to London. We will go to Kenya. We will go to Australia. We will do global impact with it, right? And I saw it take off. Rambasha Taraka. And we landed. Is, is that not better than you worrying about, hey, my car will soon break down. My life will soon break down. Fantasize. Think greatness. Achieve greatness. Put your hands together for Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can somebody raise a shout of praise tonight? Hallelujah. What a night. What a night. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Uh, who is full? <laughs> I'm full. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for the refreshing of your word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. <sighs> so this is the time in the service where we get to welcome some very special people. Please look at your neighbor and ask them, is this your first time here on a midweek service? Ask them, ask them, ask them, ask them, ask them. Hallelujah. Now, if this is your first time, please can you just signify with a wave of hand here on site for the first time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have them all around the room. Hallelujah. Please receive them with joy, with a handshake. Welcome them. Praise God. We're so happy you came. Welcome to God's House Global Impact Church. I believe in divine orchestrations and it's not a mistake you're here tonight. God is set to change the trajectory of your life as you come and as you're planted in this house. Hallelujah. Praise God. For those of our members that are joining us for the first time online, can we just celebrate them? We want them to hear all the love, you know, from the good land here. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm sure our officials have already posted a link. Just click on the link. Fill all your information and we'll be reaching out to you. We're happy you joined us. For our, our first time guests here at the Gulen, I'm sure the, um, our officials have ministered a gift pack to you. Please just fish out the sleep there. Fill all the you know, information requested clearly crisply and you know we want to reach out to you we want to pray with you we want to be a blessing to you now here's not so much we'd like you to just rise to your feet we want to pray with you tonight if this is your first time please rise to your feet please let's encourage them encourage them hallelujah and as one family can we just stretch our hands to to them towards them and just bless them just bless them just bless them thank you for angelic covering Thank you, Father, because this is the start of many great things. Thank you for fresh oil. Thank you for a renewal. Thank you, Father, for their destiny gains flight as they have come tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because, Lord, it is a start of many great things for them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together with rousing applause, celebrating them? Hallelujah. So it's that time in the service where we get to give our seeds. Um, please, our ushers will be moving down the aisle, you know, ministering um, envelopes for us that, you know, need envelopes. And, you know, we have the online platforms that will be put on the screen right about now. So please, let's prepare our seeds. I believe giving is a response to God's goodness and faithfulness. It's acknowledging God as your source, right? So please give with joy. 
give cheerfully. I will read out a scripture to us, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly, we also reap sparingly. But whoever sows generously, we also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And this is the joy. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all th times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Are you believing God for increase? This is your time to connect with God by giving cheerfully from your heart because God as your source is your sustainer. Hallelujah. So please go ahead and package your gifts if you're going to make use of the online platforms, please go ahead and do that. Hallelujah. Just give us a few seconds to do that and we're going to pray together as a family. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for the time, this opportunity to give to your kingdom. We acknowledge you as our source and we thank you because Lord, as we have sown these seeds, they will birth increase in our lives in the name of Jesus. 